on April 6, 2008, there's something that happened. Obviously, life changing, uh, life changing for you. You lost your right leg, and in a sniper, sniper fire during the Battle of Smock Valley. Um, after you were shot, just tell us a little bit about that. What what happened, and what um, what happened? Just kind of give us a blow by blow. There's a friend of mine that uh, got he got, he got shot in the back, and uh, going into a, a building in Afghanistan, and um, I met I met him at the uh, helicopters for heroes, uh, deal. And man, just these stories. And, and yeah. can you kind of go through that? Because, you know, I've told that story a couple of times to people and they're just like, Oh my gosh. And they can't really, you really can't see it from a standpoint of us civilians, because I mean, you know, the biggest thing we have is maybe with our boss or maybe with our, 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 you know, people we work with or our mate or something. And we have a little bit of a, you know, but other than that, I mean, it's really not. So can you take me through yeah. and you kind of take us through that as much as you want to, I don't want you to relive, you know, as much. No, that's, that's fine. But, uh, In fact, I, you know, to, to your point about having, you know, uh, civilian problems, my wife always hates, you know, whenever we are either late to church or, you know, kids appointment, I say, Hey babe, we're not getting shot at, you know, this is not a big said, problem. Yeah. Said, I've seen a big goes, problem. Yeah. And you said that before. You go, Jay. She go, he goes. I don't really care what you ask me. I've been shot at. So just go ahead and ask me questions you want to before the show. Yeah, right. I, I think I can handle it. And I said, Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. But no, see, you know, April sixth will, will forever be a day that you know that I will remember. Right. Uh, on that day, uh, ODA three 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 six was the special forces team that I was uh, fortunately assigned to. We were a, a a Green Beret team that was, in my mind, one of the best that I've ever been. You know. I've been a part of a bunch of absolute great Americans, patriots, just, you know, what we like to call barrel chested freedom fighters, right? That's, that's what we were full of. And, and uh, we were a very, very close team. The, the difference between, you know, what we have there and what you would get on the outside is, you know, we didn't like each other. We loved each other, mm -hmm. you know, and it didn't mean we got along, right? It didn't mean we all saw eye to eye. You know, you may have an a-hole on a team, but nobody else is going to say that, right? You better not call him that. You know, he's our guy. And, and so that's that's the mentality we lived with. And, and uh, we were with uh, 60 Afghani counterparts. So that was the you know, my point earlier about what is a Green Beret. You know, we we, actually, we didn't just go on a, on a mission. We went on a mission with 60 other Afghani commandos. And uh, it was a, a fighting force that was actually new to the – uh, Afghani National Army, the commando units was actually a lot like Green Berets where there was a selection process. There was a schoolhouse that you had to go through after that, and uh, which is obviously why they were attached to us. And, and uh, you know, we, we, we had very good rapport with the commandos. In fact, we, we had a, uh, a celebrity. His, his actual name was Muhammad Ali. <laughs> mm, <laughs> I never wow. will forget, you know, looking at the roster. I said, hold up, Muhammad <laughs> Ali, raise your hand, you know, and see a little – uh, uh Muhammad John, Wayne. Ali. John Wayne, John Wayne, Muhammad yeah, Ali. Yeah, 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 exactly. And we had another guy that I called him Joe Pesci. He looked just like Joe Pesci, a little you know, <laughs> short brown guy with a beard, you know, and, and uh, going to formation every morning. I'd look at him and say, Joe Pesci. He'd give me a thumbs up. He'd say, John Wayne. <laughs> That's funny. That's you funny. know, so we, we, just, we did have great rapport with them, and, and uh, we – we're on a mission to kill, capture Haji Gafur. That was the, our high value target that we were going after. You know, it was a tier one, tier zero level target. That is, uh, you know, it was a bin Laden type target that was um, the reason why he was so high. He was in charge of the HIG. The, uh, if you Google it, I can't pronounce it, but it's the same thing as Al Qaeda, Taliban, you know, Islamic radical extremists. That's what they were. And what he would do or they would do their organization is they would go into a gym mine. You know, so Afghanistan's a very, very uh, ex, you know, large exporter of gems, stars, sapphires, rubies, and things of that nature. And he would go into that mine and say, hey, I'm in charge now. And then all the money from that export product, he would fund the HIG with. You know? and so that's why he was on that, that uh, eight, tier one, tier uh, zero level. And uh, I always say you got to put yourself in that, you know, on that morning, right? So it's April 6th. You're in the mountains of Afghanistan. Mountains of Afghanistan is just like the mountains of Colorado or Utah, or wherever that is. It's very cold in the morning still, you know, in April, right? You still got snow on the ground. It's, you know, you get below freezing at night. Eyes are in the forties and, and 
you know, we walk out that morning and, and we had a little bit of drizzle. So we didn't even think we were really going to go because, you know, helicopters don't like to fly, right? When, whenever you're dealing with rotary aircraft, any type of inclement weather comes in, you know, the majority of time because of risk, you know, uh, assessments, you know, we get stood down. And, and uh, so that was the first uh, nas- uh, reaction that I had. So, but we still got kitted up. We did everything like we normally did. We got with our commandos. And I never will forget, you know, being on that helicopter. You know, a helicopter wants to do two things, fly or crash, right? You're either taking off or you're coming down. It doesn't like to hover, right? So when it's sitting on that ground and those rotors are spinning and it's not going anywhere, you have a very violent, you know, uh, uh, if you've ever taken off in a helicopter, you know what I'm talking about, where it's just sitting there rocking. Well, so imagine having that the, the, the headphones on you know, with all your guys in this, you know, CH-47, which is a, uh, it's called a Chinook. It's like a bus with two rotors. And we were, you know, very, very close in proximity to each other in there, you know, waiting, you know, you're hearing the radio traffic from the pilot to the ground force commander to, you know, seat of uh, commander, you know, getting real time updates on whether the guy's still there, you know, what's the weather doing. So it was very uh, uh, kind of a chaotic and, and suspenseful, you know, moment until you hear the three words that every cool guy wants to hear, execute, 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 right? And that's whenever the wheels mm-hmm. lifted up. And uh, that's whenever, you know, I always say that's when we were living, you know, uh, not like the Matthew McConaughey, L-I-V-I-N, you know, wasn't that living. <laughs> you know, right. when those wheels lifted, Jay, I didn't know if I was going to be alive when they landed. 